Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Puck Buddy Podcast. Why did you grow that big white beard, Bo? I've been working on it for, you know, my entire life because I can't grow a beard to save myself. <laughs> the Fu Man. <laughs> Fu Man Chu. Yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah, well, once again, we are your Puck Buddy Podcast. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. With your hosts here, Eddie Murad, <laughs> Cameron Che coming in, and <laughs> uh, Bo Hendrickson. <laughs> <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> As you can see, we have our battle cries ready, and we are ready to, you know, go to battle this week. Yeah. This podcast, and you know, this, you know, these sections we have coming up, we're going to do a little bit of keep trade cut, and then we're going to just hop right into our starts of the week. Um, so right, let's just get right into it, guys. Yeah. Let me uh, let me hold your guys' hands and let me take you through some KTCs. So. We're going to start off with someone dear and close to Bo's heart, Evgeny Kuznetsov. Ripping out my heart. I know. <laughs> Has him in two leagues. Um, I want to know your guys' opinion on this because we've talked about him at long lengths. He has um, seven points on the season, zero in the last four games. Recently has been put back on the top line starting this week. And he's actually seen his minutes increase from 14 minutes, 18 minutes, 19 minutes and 20 seconds to 19 minutes and 21 seconds in the last four games. So he's been seeing a little more time in each of these games. He's act, He's been the coach Barry Trotz has obviously got some confidence in starting him on the top line. After starting Backstrom on the top line, he went on a super tear. So I think he's hoping the same thing will happen to Kuznetsov, and it's he's got the skill set to actually have that happen so i'm hoping for the best but with all these changes in mind all the time on ice time that i mentioned um what do you guys think so uh yeah go go for it yeah i'm gonna kind of get into it just because this is some guy that i i've been making this decision myself in terms of what i should do with him (laughs) and i honestly i haven't even come up with a, a like a good decision uh but you can't cut kuznetsov um, you, myself, wasted too high of a pick on him to you know cut someone of that sort. Um, but in terms of keeping and trading him, I mean, you'd love to trade him at this point if you could, but you won't won't get the value that you originally you know drafted him for. So I'm gonna have to put him as a keep, even though I hate to keep him because he's <laughs> been just pooping all over my lineup. Yeah. Um, it's just tough to you know look at this guy right now and see him only putting up one shot a game. If lucky, if you're lucky, you'll get two, and he's just not going to produce, you know, with that type of a, you know, shooting. I know he's more of a passer, but he's got to get something to the net, get, you know, be more aggressive in the offensive zone. Um, but for me, he's you just got to keep him until he gets, um, you know, on a point streak. That's kind of how I see it. If I could get, you know, a good trade for him, someone that might value him on last last year's numbers, I would totally pull the trigger. But I think that's going to be tough to come by at this point. What do you think, Cam? Yeah. Well, uh, like I mentioned in the first part of this week's podcast, I give Kuznetsov about eight and a half days before I cut him uh, or trade him. But uh, right now he's a keep only because he's now on the top line. So if he if he gets one point in the first two games this week to boost his confidence, that will give me a little bit more leeway to keep him for a little bit longer. Then if he starts to really pick it up, Perhaps you could trade him for someone else if you don't believe he's saying that, depending on his shooting percentage, the amount of shots he takes. If the shot total that he is taking does not increase, but a few are just going in, that's when I would say trade, because he's not really changing his play. It's just luck changed a little bit. If he begins to get four or five shots per game uh, and he begins to get some points, then I would say keep him for sure, because he's really getting his confidence back. So for me, it all depends on this week, but for right now, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. If you can find someone who values like a kind of diamond in the rough kind of guy, I think he could definitely shine near the end of the season if he, like you said, gets his confidence back up. But like, who would you rather have? Would you rather have Barkov or Kuznetsov if someone traded you straight up for him? I would take Barkov right now. You'd, Honestly, you'd whatever take... good value I could get for him. What about like Kop- well, Kopitar, take... who's been injury prone and on the Kings, uh, who've been slumping? I would do it for Kopitar as well. Tavares? I, I, I would do in a heartbeat to Mars. Mars. straight up. All right. Um, it's just I don't think many players will value him as high right now. Okay. Um, until he starts producing. I mean, it's tough when 
your team puts up seven goals and you, and you get nothing. no points. Yeah, so it's, it's bad. All right. Can't block shot. <laughs> <laughs> probably blocking on his own net. Yeah, probably his own team. Yeah. yeah. Or the other net, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so okay. That's what we got on Kuznetsov. Next, I want to move on to a goalie. Some goalie that's been playing super hot. The doobie doobie doo, Devin Dubnik. Hello. Yeah, this guy, he's been playing out of his mind, posting a 9.48 save percentage and a 1.59 goals against average on the season. His quality starts percentage has been way over 600, which is a normal quality start percentage, and it's been 7.86. Wow, that is insane. What do you do with this guy? And let me give you some numbers just in perspective, too. Uh, Minnesota right now, although Dubnik has been posting all these great numbers, has been 21, 21st in possession on the season. That's pretty low. Uh, they've been 24th for shots against per 60 minutes, which is pretty good. And they've been 6th on PDO, so they've had some good puck luck this season. And they're second in save percentage on the season, only behind Carey Price. So... What do you think? Do you keep this guy? Do you sell high on Dubnik? Do you think he can continue doing what he's doing? Or do you just drop him all together and, you know, hopefully you go pick someone like Vasilevsky on the wire who's been getting shutouts on the, on the reg? Well, if any of Vasilevsky's open, you know, you never want to rule that decision out. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think these are some crazy numbers. Um, I just want to give you my opinion, too. Um, I don't think that he will not continue putting up these numbers. I don't know if you guys have faith in him, but... What do you think, Cam? I don't know. Uh, I don't think he will continue these amazing numbers, you know? But I don't think he's going to be dropping anywhere to, like, a... Uh, well, I don't know. What goalies do I have? Schneider like Jones. Jones. Level? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, no, no, no. Um, all joking aside, I think that the um, Wild are doing pretty well defensively this year, so... I don't see Dubnik uh, really dropping dropping too many games for his team, but honestly, right now I would try and sell high on Dubnik. Oh yeah, he's been known to have hot streaks and then kind of not go cold, but go kind of lukewarm. Uh, yeah. So I would sell high, to be honest, right now if I could. Okay. How about you, Bo? Yeah. I'm gonna take a different approach. I'm gonna keep him. Yeah. Um, and the reason why, um, within his 14 starts, all of his, his save percentage in every game has been over 900, except one, where it's been .824, and they actually still won that game. <laughs> so he's been, you know, even in his losses, he's still putting up a solid save percentage, and, uh, you know, his goal against isn't looking that bad. But the main thing, the main reason I would keep him is he already has four shutouts on the season. Yeah, and, and he, had he had five last season. Yeah. So he's already he's gonna I guarantee you he passes what he got last year, and I think he has a solid chance of having the most shutouts this season. And that alone, if you're gonna have the most shutouts in the NHL right now, you deserve to be kept as a starting goaltender. Um, I mean, in terms of you know wins and all that stuff, like he's gonna be up and down because this central division's a tough division. But if he can get me a shutout every you know once a month, uh, I would love to keep him. So. Yeah, I just don't know if you can rely on that. He got three shutouts back yep. to back. That was pretty crazy. He so did. I don't know if he's gonna get that right. same number anytime soon. He might get a couple more throughout the season, but it just shows that once he's hot, he's hot. So yeah, the dude's on but, fire. Uh, really, yeah. really quick, guys, if I can jump in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There was an article earlier today, uh, uh, kind of interviewing Bruce Boudreaux, the the Wild coach, and how their team's doing and everything, and he really praised the, the goaltending and he praised the defensive work. But one thing that did worry him is that they're having trouble scoring more than two goals on any given night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for them, getting, or I guess for me, getting a win with, with Dubnik, uh, he's playing really well. However, if his team can only score one or two goals in front of him every night, it's not a guaranteed win for me. Even if Dubnik plays well, he faces 30 shots, he lets in three, still over 900 save percentage or 900 save percentage but they lose that game you know what I mean so yeah, yeah. recently they've been doing really well with it uh, but Bruce Boudreaux said that they've been getting lucky and that he's a little bit uh, not worried but a little bit concerned about the lack of, of scoring uh, yeah. you know on a gameplay basis so 
Yeah. For me, that's that's why he's a trade and not just a keep and wait and see what happens. Yeah, so I could see that. I'm more of hoping that Parise will, you know, hopefully, you know, take them out of that scoring slump. But I can totally <laughs> see what you mean. The Minnesota team is not a very high scoring team. They're more defensively yeah. minded. They're very defensive. Yeah. So I can see that being a problem for Dubnik in uh, future games. So would you rather have a slumping Jake Allen right now? Do you think the St. Louis Blues will pick it up, or would you rather have Dubnik? I think season. Jake Allen is not is not as good as people think he is. I think he's way overrated. So yeah. for me, Dubnik over Allen. Dubnik? What yeah, about, Dubnik as well. What about Ben Bishop? That one's uh, a little tougher. That one's harder just because of the injuries. Um, but I think, again, I will probably have to take Dubnik just because uh, Tampa Bay has injuries, as Cam mentioned. Yeah, and he's splitting time with Vasilevsky, whereas yeah, Dubnik's well. the workhorse. Uh, yeah, one more yeah, I want to mention so. is... What about Matt Murray? He's been playing out of his mind. He's been getting more, 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 and more starts over Flurry. He's on a hot Pittsburgh team, who we know is going to finish in the top of the Eastern Conference. So yeah, I wouldn't mind doing maybe a, a double trade, right? So Dubnik and one more for Murray and someone else. Yeah. One to one. That's not an equal trade just because Dubnik is the starter over there. So if you got, you know, another another player, um, while getting rid of your you know, one of your fifth defensive spot or your last forward spot and just kind of switched it up. Uh, I would not mind that, actually. Yeah, okay. I totally agree with Cam there because uh, the main reason uh, you definitely want to get uh, the better value player that they're going to package with Matt Murray because the way I see it right now with Murray and Fleury is they are splitting time at the moment, but if you look, Fleury has been losing Pittsburgh games compared to... Uh, Matt Murray's actually, you know, been winning them games. So I can see Matt Murray, you know, breaking that split that's currently there yeah. and starting to win this starting job further down the season. So I'd rather yeah. have Murray maybe more in the long run. And if you can get a better player along with Murray, then I would easily trade away Dubnik for, for him, for All Matt right. Murray and another player. Cool. Well, glad to get your guys' opinion on that. Let's move on now. Uh, let's move on to a scorching hot Marion Hosa. Who yeah. thought this old man would keep rolling this time of the year? Man, I'm amazed at how well he's doing. I did. Doing. I did. Did, did you? Yeah. Did you? He's beautiful. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> got to bring out the Hosa because he's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Douse him with the host. I'm going to do, uh, do a quick shout out to Ned O'Connor because he is a big Chicago fan. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, he, he did tell me so. I told him that Hosa was about to fizzle out. And he told me that that wasn't going to happen. And <laughs> look what's happening. So, so I'm gonna have Ned try and do some kind of like the Sharks are gonna win the cup uh, prediction, but we'll see. We should get him as a guest on the show. <laughs> get him set, get right? some Chicago <laughs> input. Uh, well, I'm interested to see what you guys think then, because this is um, a guy I'm very interested in knowing what some opinions on. So this year he has showed no signs of showing slowing down or aging. He has 11 goals and six assists, plus six rating, six power play points, and 46 shots on goal this season. His consistency is ridiculous. He has scored a goal in six of his last seven games and hasn't had back-to-back games without a goal in his last 12. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> what do you think of this guy? His PDO is kind of ridiculous right now. It's it's way over 100. It's at 105.9. Do you think he's going to come back down to earth and it's going to come back to the normal trend of 100? Or is he going to just keep scoring? And What do you think? Should you sell high? Should you... Um, sell low, not sell low, but should you sell high? Should you keep him? Should you trade him? What do you think? Um, with him, honestly, it's it's, it's it, hockey's a long season, and you know the older you get, the the tougher it is to you know compete every single game. Mm-hmm. So I, I honestly would trade high on him now. Um, he he's already second in the league in goals, tied with a couple of players. But the only people above him are Crosby and Patrick Laine. Mm-hmm. And I I'm just looking at his stats now. Like he's producing you, he's producing the goals, which is great. He has a lot of shots, which is also good, and he gets the power play points. But otherwise, he's not a full stat stuffer. He's not going to get you all the hits. He's not going to get you penalty minutes. He'll have a, a solid plus minus because he's constantly scoring. But I, I think if I can get a, a bigger name player uh, for him, I would totally do it. Um, but if I, you know, if you can't, totally hold him. What do you think, Cam? Uh, man, I, 
I am torn because it really makes me happy to see Hosa performing as well as he is. I really was not expecting that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and I'm I'm a big Hosa fan. I know some people aren't, uh, but I think he's a he's a great player. So, <laughs> uh, personal taste, I probably would keep him for now. But I, I logically, I would do what what Bo suggested to trade high on him uh, with the same exact reasons. He is not a hitter. Uh, his penalty minutes are not not really increasing that much. Uh, but he does get goals. However, just like Bo said, the long season is going to take a toll on him. Uh, and, you know, players go on hot and cold streaks all the time, and Hoso is no different. So if you traded high for him now, that would probably be a very good decision. Um, if you waited until he got a little bit cold, even if he got, you know, two or three games without a point, it'll be much harder to make a case for someone at his age that he's going to make a comeback again to his hot time right now. So mm-hmm. trade high would be my answer. Yeah, so both of you are kind of trade high-ish. So yeah. um, what do you think about like him across for Patrick Sharp? Some, a guy who gets a lot of shots and a lot of hits but hasn't been getting many goals or assists, but he has the upside being on a hot – or like a Dallas team that gets a lot of goals and a lot of scoring involved. What would you think about a trade for him? I think he's no. worth more than that. What about Rick Nash? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I still think he's worth. You can get more than that, Nathan McKinnon. That's a little closer. Not, I don't yeah. think you're going to get Nathan McKinnon for him. You don't think so? Not Nathan one, McKinnon's been slumping a lot. Not, I don't. Not not one for one. I mean, honestly, Nathan McKinnon is going to be a better season long pick, in my opinion. I agree right? with so you. If you're looking at a. I know that uh, Blackhawks are a much better team, so uh, the Blackhawks are at the top of the Central, whereas the Avalanche are at the very bottom of the Central. So. Like, yeah, but the, the thing is, the only difference there for me is going to be the plus minus. So if you're not too worried about plus minus, McKinnon is a better option. Um, he's kind of an all across the board player, uh, while Hosa is kind of just goals and shots right now. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, um, so for me, I'd rather have McKinnon long term. All right, last question: How about James Neal on a slumping Predators team? Ugh. No, I keep Hosa. I'm going to have to take the ladder. I'm gonna, I would go for James Neal. Okay. Really? James Neal has been performing uh, as of late. He, uh, he's he been struggling. He struggled off the gate. But if you look at his past couple of games, uh, he, what is it? The past, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. The past seven games, he's, uh, except the last game he scored, he was on a six-game goal-scoring streak. So similar to Hosa in terms of the amount of goals that he's shooting, but he also gets you the hits. Um, he'll get you the penalty minutes as well. Um, I, I kind of see him as a more all-around fantasy stuffer in terms of all the stats. Uh, but uh, it's just it's just more of a James Neal is uh, one of the top players on Nashville. on the Predator, a Nashville Predators team, while Hosa is surrounded by a lot of other great players. So I'd rather have one player that I know will be getting a lot of points compared to someone who I know, you know, could be could be you know behind a couple of other players. All right, very interesting cool. viewpoints on that. I'm glad I got to talk to you guys about that. Um, let's move on again. Uh, I want to move on to a defenseman now, um, and Aaron Ekblad. So as we talked about earlier in the last episode. This guy's been performing really well. He has three goals in the past four games. He's finally starting to ramp up, and people who drafted him are now getting starting to become a little happy with him after he's produced really nothing since then, or up to that point. He has still has no assists on the season, which is questionable. Um, his possession metrics are fine. He has great possession metrics, but his PDO is low, so that might indicate he might be in for a little bit of a hot streak coming up here soon. Um, if he's starting to catch fire like Katniss, are you going to want to keep this guy as a top four D-man in Florida who's on the top power play unit, or are you going to want to sell him right now? And do you think he'll still keep producing consistently? What do you think? Um, for me, defensemen definitely go through ups and downs more than forwards. Uh-huh. Uh, I love Ekblad. I think he's a great player, great puck uh, mover. I like him too. Power play. I, I keep him. I don't. I don't think there's any reason to uh, make make a move on him. Okay. Yeah. 
unless you unless you want to you know make a move on him, and then and then it's a whole different story. <laughs> Take him out to I dinner. Think, I don't think you should move him. Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe if uh, you take him out to dinner, he might start getting a. You'll be, you know, getting some assists. You'll be assisting him in the getting assists. Yeah. Oh, it's true. You it's might score yourself. Sense. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Aaron, if you're listening to this, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, if you're listening to this, Cam's number is. Yeah. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah, actually, my address, my number. <laughs> um, but yeah. Where I'm, I will be at 4 p.m. Um, yeah, I don't know about you, Bo, but I, I said keep him. Yeah, no, I agree with Cam. I think he pretty much, you know, said enough there. Uh, my, the reasons why I would keep him is for um, just defensemen in general. It's it's pretty tough to get a, a scoring defenseman in terms of goals. So if you can get one that's, you know, one of the top defensemen in shooting the puck, then it's more than likely mm-hmm. to start going in like it is for him. And another good thing about him is his shots and his hits are close to equal. He has 49 shots this season, 41 hits. So I like that ratio of close to one to one. Um, but, you know, the assist will come. I'm not worried about him. I'm totally fine keeping him. So how about him or Roman Yossi? I would uh, keep Ekblad. John Klingberg. Uh, that was a little tougher. That's tougher. That's a little tougher. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one's a little tougher. Um... What do you, what do you think, Cam? Um, oh man, I I'm probably gonna I would probably keep him. Uh, or if you do Klingberg, you could do a two person trade if you need to get rid of somebody. Uh, to kind of sweeten the deal a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, Eddie, I know you love Klingberg, but I think Ekblad is a little better than Klingberg at this point. I do like Ekblad a lot. I'd love Klingberg, as yeah, you, as you mentioned. Um, I think I agree with you guys. Ekblad, the Florida Panthers are a team that they score a lot and they get a lot of chances and they have a lot of good defense and a lot of good goaltending and they they seem to be always making a push for the cup or not cup, but they make a push for playoffs every year recently. So I think that's no different this year. I definitely think Ekblad will pick it up. And I'm not worried about the assists, like Bo said. So, but if it comes to Klingberg, I honestly I would probably trade him. I know you said no. Um, I just trust Klingberg more on a team that needs to score more, pretty much. So yeah. I would take Klingberg over Ekblad. I would take Ekblad over Yossi. What about like Ramis Ristolainen? He's always getting power play points. He's their best defenseman. He is. But I think I would want the defenseman on the better team, so I, I okay. would take X, Eggblad. Okay. Me too. I think Eggblad above everyone, um, be only because, yeah, like even the Klingberg, the plus minus is not there. Yeah. So that's an extra stat that Eggblad has that Klingberg is not going to have with their goaltending woes. So, Very true. Uh, I, no, I totally agree with you guys. That's He's definitely on the better team, so I'm sure he'll be... I think he'll hit the 40-point mark this season, so... If you can get a if you can get a defenseman that's gonna very that will definitely hit the fifty point or over the forty point mark, I would trade him. But it's not there's not very many that you'll get. So and Ekblad is a solid solid choice right now. Um, but yeah, I'm glad. Okay, I got your guys' opinion on that. Let's move on again. Uh, last one for the keep trade cut section. Let's go to Louis Erickson, a guy who's been really slumping. He finally scored in his last game, though, versus Chicago. A really tough team. I know. Um, ultimately, the Canucks ended up uh, losing 4-3, to three, but you know it's nice to see him actually produce. This was only Erickson's third goal in the season, which is really bad because the Canucks uh, drafted it, or not drafted it, but they picked him up in the offseason thinking he was going to be the Hoping superstar. Be, uh, yeah. yeah, he was going to play with the Sedins and all this, so... They're really not too happy about it right now. He's dropped. He's not even on the city line anymore. He's dropped to the second line and the second power play unit. He averages approximately two shots a game. He has no hits. So, I mean, what do you think? Can you even trade this I guy? Think, Are you going to drop I think him? I he and Bonker should go back to the minors. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, a drop to the minors for you. All right. Yeah. Got to cut, cut, no, cut it and I cut mean, him. Yeah, what do scissors do, right? Scissors, I mean, paper. Did, are, 
Bo, are you saying cut Erickson? Is that your... Yep. I'm going to cut him unless yeah. he moves up back to the Sedin's line. I just don't trust him right now. There's a lot of players I would rather have than Louis Erickson at the moment. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so sad. Like, it Louis is. Erickson has so much potential. It know? is, yeah. He's such a good player, too. Um, I, I think... I think I would probably... I don't, I don't know. He still gets power play time, so I might just keep him for now. So, my comparison is someone like like Bodker. I think Louis Erickson... Well, actually, do you guys know how, how high up he went in our draft? Uh, not super high, but I would say the, the middle to late rounds, probably. Okay, so Bodker went in the very late rounds, and Louis Erickson maybe went a little before that. But if I compare the two of them, right? The team that picked both of them up, hoping they were going to really give a spark to their team to score and everything. Uh, neither are doing very well. Well, Erickson still is on the second line against power play time. Well, Bodker is on the third line now and, and second power play unit, but is potentially going to be, uh, oof, you know, um, not on that anymore. So I'm going to keep Erickson for now. Yeah, I think I keep Erickson for now. Okay. Um, I say drop straight up, but yeah, it's, it's good to have. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I totally see where you're coming from. He could get back on the top line. He's definitely the best choice for them on the top line, apart from like Bo Horvat. But they need him yeah, as I a think depth. Any of those type of players, right? I think Erickson is the one that I would say keep and just hold on a little bit longer. Like his net off, I'm actually more ready to get rid of him than I would Erickson, which is weird. Really, but- that's. Perplexing. Yeah. I'm the exact like, not, not drop his net off, trade him, obviously. Uh, Erickson, for me, would be a uh, would be a keep over a cut right now. So, yeah. yeah. Well, they have around the same points, so there you go. All right, well, good to hear about that. Keep trade cut section is over now. We're done. We're done with that. We sh- we're going to move yeah, on maybe. to the starts of the week so you guys can get a few people that we are super confident in just starting. You should... 100% start these guys in your lineup. So don't, confident. Don't question it. Uh, let's go through these really quick, boys. <laughs> start them over Crosby. So, <laughs> don't start anyone over don't Crosby. Um, but, yeah, okay, I'll start it off with my start of the week, Ryan Johansson. Uh, the Nashville Predators have been kind of disappointing lately. They're, the, they're uh, second to last in their division. Um, Johansson only has nine points in 17 games, but he still has a very strong Corsi and his PBO has been slowly rising above a hundred each game. So I think this talented center is going to be up for a good week this week. They got a nice homestead where the Preds are very good at home. They have a five and one record and they have games against Tampa Bay, Dallas, and Winnipeg. It'll be a very good test for them, but I think they're going to have a strong showing there. And I think Johansson's a, a solid uh, play this week. So. Play him with confidence. What do you got for us, Bo? Um, so mine is uh, Jeff Carter. Aaron Carter? It's Jeff Carter. Oh, oh his brother. Aaron Carter? <laughs> <laughs> Back with his new hit single, uh, The Kings Suck. Um, <laughs> no, but Jeff Carter does not suck, even though I like to say the Kings do. Um, he's currently... Probably one of their best players with Kopitar out, if for sure their best center at the moment. Oh, yeah. Um, since Kopitar has been out, uh, they really needed someone to step up, and Jeff Carter has done just that. Um, he's currently riding a three-game goal streak and a three-game point streak with two multi-point games as well, uh, with four goals, two assists, plus two, two power play points, and 22 shots. Woo! So, you know, that's really good wow. for the past, uh, you know, three games. So we, we like that around here. Um, so as I mentioned before, kind of the shots were starting to ramp up. Uh, he was it. going from five shots to six shots to eight shots. So, you know, hopefully next game he gets 10 and then 12, and, you know, keeps on going up. But the main reason um, he's been producing so much is uh, Daryl Sutter has reunited the, the, the that 70s line. Love that um, line. So, you know, Pearson, Toffoli, and Carter are currently the top line on the Kings. And so with that, they've won their past three games because of the Carter line. So expect that them to keep on producing without Kopitar out. I'm not even really uh, intimidated by uh, their schedule. I mean, they play the Islanders first, which is great, but then they play Chicago and San Jose. So it's a little tough, but I think the Carter line is still going to produce because they need somebody to. 
Yeah. Um, Especially with Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, But uh, someone I, or not someone, a stat I kind of want to mention about him is he's currently leading the NHL with four game-winning goals. Wow, really? Yeah. I I mean, I know our league doesn't. Captain Clutch. Yeah. Yeah. The Clutch Carter. Yeah. Yeah, feel free to, you know, start this guy this week. I'm fully confident in it. So. Yeah. If anyone has uh, game-winning goals as a stat in their league, uh, they should, like, message us and let us know how it goes because that's something I want to add to our league next year possibly. But, yeah. I think it would be a good category. Very interesting stat. That's cool. That's really cool. All right. Or Shane Dome Flash is taken to the finger. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about my guy next, if you guys don't mind. Yeah. I have Alexander Winberg. As my start, Whatberg? Uh, for for my center, yeah, Mr. Wen Wenberg. Oh, uh, wh- yes, Wenberg. Wenberg, Wenberg. Where, when, why? His matchup starting on Monday. He plays Colorado and Calgary at home, and then he is back to backs at Tampa and then at Florida. So the Jackets have a decent beginning of the week, but then kind of a tough end with back to back against. Florida team, so uh, that's something to keep in mind. However, let's talk about his recent stats. So the last five games, Wenberg has two goals and two assists, as well as let's see, seven shots so far in the season. He's got 17 points, is plus six, and has 10 power play points. Wow! Oh, 10 man. power play points. Yeah. So, uh, I mean. Alexander Weinberg is, for me, a must-start. Um, he's on that top line, you know, with the Jackets. He's on the power play. Uh, his ice time has been going up steadily. I think he's averaging about 18 or 17.40-ish in the past five games. So uh, start the Lindbergh. Yes. Now, uh, let's move on to left-wingers real quick. I'll just do mine uh Jump into real quick. I have Andre Palot. Uh, Palot. Palot. You guys can understand me. Palot. Palot. Palot uh, his. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. So Palot, the past couple games, hasn't been putting up the most impressive numbers compared to other people uh, the past week. But his matchups are, are relatively decent this week. Monday, he's at Nashville, and then he goes home for a two-game two game. Okay, two games home stand <laughs> against oh, Philadelphia and now, Columbus. <laughs> I know, right? Sorry, no. Uh, and we are not homophobic on the show. I want everyone to know that. Uh, that was just a misspeak. But he is at Nashville <laughs> on Monday and then goes to Philadelphia, or I'm sorry, home against Philadelphia and Columbus and then back away at Boston uh, to end the week. Uh, for me, it was a little bit of a cold slump, but the last game he had a goal and a fifth. Uh, and was on the ice for almost 19 minutes, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, Pilot, I'm sorry, I'm uh, trying to look at the uh, Lightning lines right away. Oh, he's on the top the line, line with uh, Kucherov and Nemestikov. Uh, Nemestikov, thank you. I couldn't remember his name. Nemestikov. So Kucherov and Nemestikov, both of which have been playing very well. Um, so to me, I, I think Pilot is, is a no-brain start. Uh, he also is on the first power play unit running the point, so you know he's going to be getting a lot of looks at the net uh, and a lot of passes off for one-timers. So uh, play Andre Pilat. Totally agree. Um, yeah, especially because he's playing on that top line with Kucherov. I pretty much am down to play whoever's playing with Kucherov at this point. He's been so good. Um, yeah. But a guy I mentioned in the previous podcast, uh, Carl Haglin, will be my left wing start of the week. Uh, I mentioned a bunch of stats with him. You can go listen to it. Uh, he's just He gets all the peripheral stats, and being on the top line with Crosby, I believe he will be getting a ton of points, hopefully. Uh, he's got some interesting matchups this week versus the New York Rangers twice. Uh, he's got the Wild, and then he's got the Devils. And they're going to need some speed and some grit to win those games. Those are some tough matchups. So I think Carl Haglund and the Crosby line will be tallying up some uh, some points there and I think he's a solid start this week so yeah there you go there you go um, so my left winger for this week um, is Milan Lucic so you might be thinking hmm 
he kind of sucks right now. Uh, no points in his last six <laughs> games. Like, Bo, stop a- reading my mind. <laughs> it's freaking me out. I can't. <laughs> stop saying that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, now, now that I'm done reading Eddie's mind, uh, let me tell you why Mr. Lucic is worthy of a start this week. Um, so it's recently been decided that uh, Todd McClellan does not like the color maroon anymore. <laughs> um, Patrick Maroon has been moved down from the top line with uh, McDavid. So what does that mean? Milan Lucic has been moved up to the top line with McDavid. And Woo-hoo! So that's always great news. Anyone that's playing with old McDavid and you know some on his farm uh, is willing <laughs> to increase production. Uh, he's, you know, they're going to be a first line player, first power play unit player. And, you know, the main thing with Lucic is he, you know, he'll always get you the penalty minutes, the shots and the hits, but if he could start producing some goals and assists, which is completely possible on McDavid's line, then, you know, that's, that's great. Um, but, you know, a reason that I really like him this week is his matchups. Um, so he has he's played four games this week. The first one's going to be a little rough against Chicago, but expect the, you know, the first line to continue to produce. But after that, they're playing at Colorado, then at Arizona, and then they're playing at home versus Arizona. So Colorado and two matchups against Arizona, that's a beautiful thing right there. Uh, Milan Lucic is you know, guaranteed to put some points away as long as he's playing with McDavid. Um, I totally so agree. I say fire him up. You're fired. Oh. You're fired. <laughs> yes, I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Up. All right. So those were the left wingers. Uh, let's look at a couple of right wingers right now. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna keep on going because keep the ball I rolling. Love Bo. to hear myself talk, which mm-hmm. I know not everyone else does. Yeah. But uh, my right winger Nathan McKinnon. So the cool thing with him is he is center and right wing eligible. Nathan. Yeah, That's my kind of guy right there. Yeah. yeah. So if Cam's not going to start, or we already know Cam's going to start him, so that means you might as well do the same. <laughs> so he's currently, uh, he's got back-to-back multi-point games, a goal and assist in uh, the past two games, so that's great right there. Um, in his past three games, he has, uh, like I said, two goals, two assists, plus four, 21 shots, and a couple of hits. So, 21 shots. Yeah, 21 shots is the, the main point of emphasis I want to highlight right there um he started off with a a 10 shot game then went to six shots and then five shots so he is firing the puck as much as he can it doesn't matter if it's going in or not he'll keep on shooting it so that's a good thing i mean he's on the first line still uh and the first power play unit and the main reason that i like him similar to lucic is his matchups uh he's played three games this week playing his uh first one in uh, in Columbus, so maybe not the most favorable one, but it's still a decent matchup. Uh, then he's playing against Edmonton, and then wrapping it up with Vancouver, which will be a great, great matchup. So Nathan McKinnon, I definitely see him getting another multi- multi-point game. So go ahead and start him this week. Totally agree. Great start this week. Uh, I'll roll right into mine. I got Nick Foligno. Um uh, Felino has been Felignus. <laughs> well, I know you like him, Cam, because he's been killing it on Columbus, which is awesome. But he's actually right, Bo actually pointed this out to me. But he's been the number one right wing this year on the season, and he's been playing really hot as of late. Left wing, left wing. Sorry, he's been the number one left wing this year because he does dual positioning, which Cam I'm sure is super stoked about as well. But yeah, he's been oh, you know it. great you know on the it. left wing. <laughs> Uh, he has seven goals, 11 assists on the season. Columbus has two really juicy matchups this week at home versus Columbus. I mean, they are Columbus. They're playing themselves at the scrimmage. <laughs> you played <laughs> yourself. You so played it. Where's DJ Khaled? <laughs> <laughs> but they're playing Colorado and Calgary, two slumping teams. Then they have two tough road matchups at Tampa Bay and Florida. But altogether, you're going to have four games this week coming out of Felino. So... I mean, that's really great. That's more points for him to accumulate, more stats to stack. Um, but I'm hoping he's going to feast at home and carry some of that hungry, hungry appetite on the short road trip. So hungry, hungry, no. He's someone I would definitely hungry, start with hungry, confidence. Hipster. Hungry, <laughs> hungry, hipster. Hipster. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, uh, yeah, 
I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I don't think there's any way I can't because he's a Columbus guy. But <laughs> uh, let me move on to my right winger. Here we have David Perron. I'm going to stop talking like that. He's 15% owned. <laughs> um, Perron has been a big spark for, for the Blues who kind of have been struggling to find offense. Recently, Perron has had six points in just four games, which is really cool. And because of that, the Blues have won three of the last four. He has moved up to the top line with Schwartz and Stadney and is now on the top power play unit. So if he continues to keep up the strong play, uh, he will make whoever is playing him very happy. He has some very, very, very tough matchups this week. So playing him, I understand if you're a little bit weary, but the way that he has been picking it up and the way that the Blues have relied on him is huge. So he's versus Boston, Washington, and Minnesota. Uh, however, I think that the way they've been playing and the, the trends that the Blues are following right now is that they're beginning to score. So for me, David Perron is, is a play, especially as the right wingers are, as we mentioned, much earlier on in our, in our podcast are the weakest spot. So Perron, for me, a right winger, no brainer. Moving on to defensemen, uh, I'm just going to really quickly retouch on this guy. We talked about him just a moment ago, Aaron Ekblad. As Eddie mentioned, he has no assists but five goals. In his past four games, he has three goals, six penalty minutes, and 11 hits, nine shots, you know, some, some decent stats there for, uh, for some Mr. Aaron over here. But I think... Um, it's just kind of a no-brainer. I think Ekblad is an always-start kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and their matchups coming up are not completely terrible. He has, let me see, Philadelphia at home, Columbus at home, and then he's at Carolina to end the week. So you're looking it's, at some it's not potential uh, high-scoring high games in those in the first and the last, the yeah. Philadelphia and the Carolina. So, totally. Uh, yeah, I think play Aaron Eichelad. We've talked about him enough, but we like him here at the Puck Buddy Podcast, and I think he should be played. Yeah, he's got to play A-A-Ron. A-A-Ron! A-A-Ron! <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you haven't heard enough of that guy, I'm sure you've heard enough of this guy, but Andre Markov, <laughs> I mean, we're always really high on him at this at the Puck Buddies Podcast. Uh, he's been one of the hottest defense in the league right now, most productive deep pairing in the past three games. Top of the league at that. Um, you got to play him while he's hot. There's no question. And they have plus matchups this week uh, at home versus the Sens and the Canes. And, I mean, they're 10-0 and 0 at home, so you have to play all your uh, Canadians when they're playing at home. And then he gets some um, a, road, um, a road game versus the Red Wings, who we know are kind of eh. So definitely mark your calendar to play Markov. So no, I got mine marked. There you go. What do you got, Bo? All right, so I'm going to give you guys my defenseman. And as you kind of noticed, we're picking a lot of players from Columbus this week. And that is because they have some juicy, juicy matchups. Ooh, so juicy. So juicy. But mine is Zach Wierenski. So at this point, if you don't already know, he is one of our breakout defenseman candidates. Uh, this is actually pretty surprising to me, but he is the number five fantasy defenseman right now. Is he really? Yeah. So that, if that, that doesn't say enough there, then I can tell you more. Um, <laughs> Please. Is, so one thing to note, I know we've, we've kind of mentioned this before, but Seth Jones has been out with an injury. And in those six <laughs> games that Seth Jones has been out, uh, Wierenski has gotten four points. And that's three goals and one assist. Wow. So, and, you know, two of those coming on the power play and 15 shots, so... He's actually been producing rather well with, uh, you know, with Seth Jones out. We weren't really sure if, uh, you know, he would be able to continue that kind of production with Seth Jones gone because, you know, they complement each other so well. But he was able to produce. And now that Seth Jones is coming back, like, expect him to, do, like, do that even more. So I can see uh, Wierenski um, and Seth Jones having a good week. I've honestly considered Seth Jones as uh, one of my uh, defensive picks, but Wierenski is clearly the, the better defenser and if not the one, number one defenseman in Columbus right now. So I will pick him as my start of the week for defensemen because they are playing Colorado, Calgary, and then they got uh, at Tampa Bay and at Florida. 
But those first two matchups are going to be great for Columbus, and they will continue to play well and win games. Well, since you're on the Columbus train, might as well say Keep your goalie. Going. Yeah, say your goalie. Sergei Bobrovsky. Babarovsky. So as, as we mentioned before, those matchups are just too good and just way too good. And, you know, if the matchups aren't good enough for you, then Sergei Bobrovsky obviously is even better. Um, he's on a four-game winning streak. Uh, and in that winning streak, he has 2.25 goal against average, 0.916 save percentage. And the crazy thing that I saw, um, he has won eight of his last nine games. I don't know if you, yeah, I don't know if you guys knew that, but that is insane. He is winning, 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 and that is the reason why the Columbus Blue Jackets are, you know, one of the top or becoming like a playoff team, which not many expected. Um, yeah. But even that one game he lost, like it was just a bad game by the entire team. Um, they ended up, yeah, yeah, losing to the Bruins five two. But that was not his fault because um, obviously he is performing on a whole nother level. He's gotten two shutouts in uh, eight of those or out of those eight games. So Sergei Bobrovsky is playing out of his mind right now. And with these good matchups coming up, can you know, you know, you just you have to start him. There's not more no no thinking that needs to be done about this. He's an every day start. Yep, totally. Um, I'll just end it with mine. Cam. Hey Cam, how you doing? <laughs> but Cam Talbot, another Cameron. Uh, Cam Talbot, uh, a lot of people have been down on him because he's um, had a five-game losing streak. But recently, they just snapped the streak with a Connor McDavid hat trick. Uh, that'll always get your team kind of pumped up and going. So, but Talbot actually posted a nine-three-nine save percentage in that game versus Dallas. So, um. You know, I think this week is one of the weeks you need to start him. He's got um, a very tough matchup, so be maybe sit him, maybe be wary of starting him versus um, Chicago on um, for their first game. But the rest of the week, you got to start him because he's just playing Colorado and, and Arizona. So um, definitely a start of the week for me. And hopefully the Oilers can start ramping up their – they're playing get some wins back because they've been slumping a little bit but uh that's all we got i guess so yeah. there we go starts of the week be confident starting those guys and i think that's gonna do it and then yeah. if any of you have doug glatt on your team doug, uh, I'm not explain doug. That if, you, if you guys know who that is good on you if you don't look him up and then proceed to do the activity that he is associated with Pick number 69. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Number one, rule number one, don't touch my Percocet. Rule number two, number do you two, have any Percocets? Do you have any Percocets? Stay away from my Percocet. Or do you have any freaking Percocets? Uh, kind of censoring ourselves there, but it's a great, yeah. great movie. Thank you, thank you yeah, for the Buck Buddy Podcast. Uh, that's the end. Uh, you know, sponsored by Jeff. So, with that, we are out. Yep. See you next week. Peace.